Building muscle is really hard. Actually, it's only really hard the first time. In fact, if you build muscle once and then lose it, it comes back again really, really fast. This is called muscle memory. This is why strength training is one of the best investments you can make in your health. Once you make that investment, even if you lose it, it comes back so much faster. This is true. Again, the data supports this. In other words, build muscle now, lose it, build muscle again, much faster the second time around. I, I was going to ask you, uh, now we know this from experience, yeah. um, but is there is there any good, clear studies that support this or yeah. that actually, oh, there are. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, is it, uh, does it come back three times faster? Oh, I don't it, know what the speed is. That's a good question. Yeah. That, hmm. so, there's there's got to be a lot of factors that play into sure, how sure. fast, but I mean, it definitely comes back faster. Like muscle memory is real. And they think it's due to increased- the CNS uh, responding to that? It's got to be both, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's more like, they think it has to do with satellite cell uh, mm. production and that that doesn't necessarily go away. So you have all these extra satellite cells that- um, that are there the second time around. But look, we've all experienced this. And, you know, uh, even doctors will talk about this. If you have a cast and you take it off, if that's ever happened to you. I know you've broken several uh, bones, Justin. Yeah. It's like you take off the yeah. cast, the leg is skinny. And then within a couple of weeks of just walking, the muscle comes back so quickly. Right. Um, it's a it's a evolutionary adaptation um, that uh, helps us survive because, uh, again, of injuries. But what's what the good news about this is you you work out now in your youth, right? You build muscle, you train, you strength train. And it, it number one, it's easier to keep. We know this. About one third, some studies even suggest one ninth of the volume is required uh, to keep the muscle that you use to build it. In other words, if you worked out three days a week to build 10 pounds of muscle, one day a week will maintain it, right? Some studies, again, say even less than that. But then the other half of this is if you stop completely and lose it, it's not like starting over. It's not at all like starting. You gain it back so much faster. Have uh, have either of you done like leg broken leg or any major leg leg stuff, or has it only been arm shoulder stuff for you? So I I had to get surgery on the bottom of my foot, and I had that's this is when I stepped on the nail, and then it like ended up getting this like flushing bacteria up oh, there, yeah. and it healed, and yeah. then it like was working its way up my leg. So I was like out for a good ten days, maybe twelve days. Uh, and then I, I was, I had to be on crutches for a long period of time. So I atrophied pretty substantially yeah. on my left leg. So when I, when I, um, when I did my ACL MCL and, uh, that I had full on brace, right. For months I was, I was casted up. Right. I'll, ne I, I know I have it on one of my old iPhones. I gotta go through and find this. I'd love to find this clip because it was so gross that I had to take a video of it and I, and I could graph like this. To complete and go like this with my extra skin. Oh, oh wow! That's how much wow. my legs had because it was right at. So what happened? Uh, if, uh, if I don't know if I've told the full story of like, so I was at like the height of like you know peak bodybuilder version of me playing basketball. Mm. So and a guy and a guy landed on my knee and there there goes my MCL ACL. And so then I get this I had to wear this like you know brace forever right before and before and after the surgery. And I remember when they took it off for me to start my rehab and I literally could pull the skin. Like it was the craziest. <laughs> so creepy, dude. Well, it is. And I, that's why I asked you guys, cause I yeah. bet you guys have never seen like, cause you guys have big legs yeah. and to, to, for it to completely atrophy, you'd be surprised on so, how yeah, much. It wasn't that bad. That's crazy. Oh, it was so, crazy. So that happened to me, by the way, I just pulled up a study on muscle memory. And in fact, there's a study here. The title of it is human skeletal muscle possesses an epigenetic memory of hypertrophy. So literally, it's a it's a memory. memory. Wow. It's a memory of the hypertrophy that it once had. That's why it comes back so fast. What a trip! But yeah, that, I dislocated my knee cap, so my knee cap came out to the side when I was uh, th maybe thirteen, um, and I had to wear this first. I you know I couldn't bend my knee at all um, because they didn't know if anything was torn. Then they they imaged it, no tear. Okay, cool. But now you got to wear this straight leg brace. So I wore the straight leg bra brace for a long time. And then I did the rehab and, you know, the, my, when I remember I took off the leg brace, my knee was bigger than my femur. Yeah. <laughs> so it looked, it was actually, it was actually a bit traumatizing as a kid to yeah. take that off uh, and look sure. at it. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I looked down and I'm it like. It tripped me out bad. Really bad. Yeah, Chicken yeah. leg. Yeah. And the doctor goes, don't worry, it comes back really fast. So I was like, oh, this is terrible, especially for an insecure skinny kid. Yeah. Well, anyway, I, I used this straight leg breast for so, for so long. I did some rehab. And this is when I really got into barbell squats. I actually got sick and tired of the fact that I, I lost uh, strength. Although the muscle came back, I had not good function. Started squatting, and then my legs just blew up. But I remember 
it went from femur to looking normal relatively easy kind of tripped me out really i mean fast. i i think i brought this up just recently on uh, one of these uh intros that this is the move that all the tr uh, professionals do yes so it's so like the a, before and after yeah this thing? is yeah. the before and and so many people actually think it's not they think it's not real they mm -hmm. think it's fake I, I would get these all the time in dms people sending me messages of like this guy shows that he he built you know yeah. thirty pounds of muscle in in three months. Is that possible? And it's like, well, yeah. If it's muscle yeah. that he lost, before, yeah. If he's know. if he's been a trainer for twenty something years and he just fell out of shape and then got back in shape, like you bet your ass he, he could do that. There's no way it's not like that. You guys are comparing him to you. You're just starting on your journey. He's been doing this for thirty years. He fell off the wagon for however long and then gets going and like, yeah, no, it's crazy. But that's like a big thing is to to do that kind of transformation and then to attach it to a supplement or attach well, it to something. Well, the and good like, news this about why. this, and again, the good news for people is that there are no permanent results when it comes to fitness. I remember as a, as a early trainer and then gym manager uh, as a kid, I remember people would say things like, okay, well, if I get in shape and work out, what happens when I stop? It's like, you know, what do you think is going to happen when you get back <laughs> out of shape? Oh, so I got to do this forever. People used to actually say this to me. I said, well, yeah, you got to maintain it for the rest of your life. So nothing's permanent. However, when it comes to hypertrophy, muscle growth, you have this built in, uh, as they said in that study, epigenetic memory, this muscle memory, where if you lose it because you stop, getting it back the second time around is so much easier. It's almost like it's almost like you've built a bunch of successful businesses. So now every time you build one, you know the formula, you know what to do, and it's so much easier than the first time you did it when you right. didn't know anything. It's very, very similar uh, to something. Yeah, like Justin that. said that earlier, right? About compounding interest, and it's like an investment. You invest in it, and that's the beauty of like when you put the work in, just like in finances. You you save. You're yep. conservative. You live well below your means. You you invest. You invest. You set up to where you have this passive income yep. that's coming in. Then you can get away with splurging and yeah. falling off the wagon for a while, or right. going and spending money like crazy for a while, and then because you have this consistent passive income that you've built up over time with all that compounding interest. It, it's very similar with muscle. It's like, man, you that's what's cool about this is if you dedicate yourself, no matter what age you're at, if you start now investing in weightlifting and building muscle, it does get easier. It's hard to add another five pounds for the first time and then another five yeah. pounds for the first time ever. But then once you've gotten to a place where you've got into, which is why too, I think it's a it's a, a very positive thing to stretch your capacity yeah. and get your see body. See how far you can go. Yeah, yeah, see how far you can get your physique mm -hmm. because once it's been there, it wants to go back there very, really easy to get it to go there. Getting it there was is really hard in a grind. Time. Yeah. But then after you've been there, man, to return there. A lot you know easier. what the confusion lies? The confusion lies because you're you're saying, okay, look, as you get older, like it gets easier. And so people are thinking, like, well, that's not true. Like a really fit strong 60 year old is not going to be like a fit strong 30 year old well there's a potential that we're talking about but within the range of potential so yes your potential changes right if you're 20 you have this potential here for performance when you're 60 it's lower right you're not gonna have the same potential because of age that's true but within the realm or range of potential once you build it keeping it maintaining it getting it back is a lot easier mm -hmm. so when you look at some of the most fit youthful looking and feeling people who are in advanced age, they almost all do lots of strength training. They almost mm -hmm. all do, if not all of them, do lots of strength training and have done strength training for a long time. It maintains and sticks around much better than any other adaptation. And then of course, all the values that come with that from the insulin sensitivity, the fat burning, or, or should I say calorie burning potential, the androgen receptor density that it provides, which means that your body still remains uh, sensitive to testosterone. The mobility, nobody ever talks about this. Muscle makes you move. So yeah. having more of it, especially as you age, means you can move better, which is extremely important as you get older. So it's definitely one of the best uh, investments you could ever make when it comes to fitness. And now on this topic, Adam, we need to address what you're doing now. And we need to be very clear because here's what I predict is going to happen. So I'm going to illustrate this, right? So you, you know, Katrina had a very terrible emergency. Since then, you basically haven't worked out. Yeah. Okay. And you've lost a lot of muscle. Yeah. yeah. A lot of muscle. A lot. Now, you used to be an IFBB professional physique competitor, very muscular. You walked around and very, you know, what was your body weight when you were walking so around? So my, my peak lean body mass was like 207. So 207 pounds of just lean body mass. Yes. Okay. Um, which means you were probably walking around 220 or something yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah. So big dude. Um, and anyway, you lost tons and tons of muscle 
um, especially because you stop working out. Now you're going to get back into it and you're documenting how quickly you can get back into shape, how fast you can build muscle. Yeah. And what I predict is people are going to see what's going to happen. It hasn't happened yet, by the way. So this is how you know, this is how confident we are. <laughs> yeah. It hasn't even yeah, happened. Yeah, Most people would wait till it happened for before. Sure. Yeah. They would, they would sandbag pictures and shit, but, uh, I predict people are going to think all kinds of like you're, you're lying. There's no way you could have done that. You must be on tons of drugs. Even that's not possible. But you're you're not going to surpass where you were before. You're just going to build back some of what you That's lost. Right. Yeah, yeah. And you, so you, what's your lean body mass now? One fifty four. Okay, so you're wow. you're a good fifty plus pounds. Yeah. under man, the yeah. potential. And, there and, is. and so you're getting back into it. Yep. it so, it's going to be a trip. People are going to witness firsthand what muscle memory plus good programming. Good diet. Obviously, you know what you're doing. You're smart. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. My plan, uh, part of the the motivation too this time around is actually to show people like I'm, I'm going to do a minimalist approach on all, on all, on all angles or all facets, right? Like even, uh, you know, typically I talk about how when I first start this, I, I start tracking right away. Yeah. I'm not even tracking right now. And the, and I, I'm documenting why I'm not at first. And it's because, uh, I'm, again, minimalist. It's like, how little can I do? effort wise towards nutrition towards exercise and everything and still see positive change and 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 start to build this physique and i uh yesterday i'm talking to the boys the boys are videoing this right so we're going to document this whole journey we're going to put it up on mind pump tv in fact i believe by the time this goes live i'm pretty sure dylan will already have the first episode up so the first day which was yesterday for me um and i'm explaining like why I'm not even tracking uh, anything right now. And the reason why is because I know I'm so under that like goal one nutritionally for me is like get an, uh, another high you protein You don't need meal. to track right yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm so under caloried and so under protein that because I've been eating twice a day for yeah. you know months now that I'm like, okay, first goal is just to eat three or four times and it make it a protein. Right away, double milk. your protein. Right, exactly. Yeah. I don't even I don't need to know that it's at 60 grams and my goal is at 220. Like, I'll get there. Don't worry. You know, I know that my body is adapted to this low that if I just bump the protein intake by 40 grams yeah. to 50 grams in a day with some stimulus, I'm going to see positive change in the right direction. I'll get more granular and crazy mm -hmm. as, as the time goes on. So that's like first and foremost is that. Now, yesterday was kind of interesting because... I say that that's what it was a plan. I've like told you I've only been eating twice a day. I ate like, like four or five times yesterday because hmm. I hadn't lifted or done anything. I only did two exercises. But okay, so let's talk about this for a second. So you did two exercises. Yes, and you went very light, very very yeah. light. even for your current level of strength. Light. It's mm. not like you went light because you couldn't go heavier. Right. You went light because you've done nothing and you know better. That's right. So you went out there. You were doing some squats. What else did you do? presses? All I did was rows. Oh, rows so, and squats. Because remember too, uh, I'm also nursing the pec tear. That's right. So there is a little bit of like, so I'm following a MAPS 15 protocol with a little twist right now. And when I say a little twist, it's MAPS pro 15 protocol is with too what, Correctional stuff. For yes, correctional. Protocol. So that's still going to take a priority. Like even today when I train today, I'm going to do something else again for like, I'm going to do some like prone cobras. Mm. I'm going to do some things to keep addressing that because mm. I, I have like my shoulder hurts bad because it's out of place. And so I'm going to address that. And that's always going to be my kind of North star while also, cause no way I'm going to build muscle. Like I'm yeah. not even doing the rows that's correctional work for me right now with the isometric you're hold. Gonna build muscle I'm going to build muscle because yeah. I'm, I haven't done anything. And, and, and it's so for people listening, you're like, well, how can you build muscle? Like, right now it'll build muscle. Now in four weeks, it won't You're no. going to have to add resistance that's right. or change the stimulus because his body's going to advance. But right now that's enough, especially considering all the muscle you've carried in the past. And now I was going to ask you this and you said, you already answered this. You did a little bit of strength training. Your appetite went through the roof. Through the roof. Katrina was like tripping out. She's just like, I'm like, I'm so, I felt like ravenous, hungry just from that first little workout, hardly doing anything. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps, just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. So- Granted, I told you I wasn't going to track and I wasn't going to do all, I wasn't going to like even target protein quite yet. All I was going to say was like whole foods, protein centric, right? That's, yeah. a, that's just, that's kind of the idea. But I'm also going to not, not eat. If I'm hungry, I'm going to eat. 
so that's kind of how I'm looking at it. It's just like, hey, if I've got the appetite right now, I'm just going to make good choices, protein centric. That's it. And again, the I of course I know I can weigh and measure and I can get even more analytical about this, but that is not the goal. The idea of this for the viewers is me showing the audience like it doesn't have to be radical. Mm -hmm. It can be just these little incremental changes over time and I'll and I'll tweak. And by the end, I'll probably be Yes. Now I know you've been tracking sleep too in the past. Is that something that you're eventually I will. Uh, eventually. Yeah. So I in the video I talk about uh turning the knob every week. Okay. Right. So my goal is and this is how I competed, this is how I this is how I do it, right? So every week I want to dial something up a tiny bit. And that can include sleep like so prioritizing sleep and recovery it can be uh dialing nutrition tighter it can be uh being more active and mobile it could be uh program intensity it could be program volume so like five knobs yeah. that i can really kind of dial dial up anytime and so i want to enter this with a very minimalist approach of just doing uh, like what i did yesterday is better than i've done anything for the last three months two exercises protein centric meals but people need to understand too doing more right now wouldn't necessarily make you move faster no it, it will make you move slower that's right so it's people have a tough time wrapping their brain yeah around because yeah. think of the think of a muscle building signal on a scale of one to ten so one very low signal ten is like this is the highest you're going to get that signal okay yeah. but with that you're going to balance recovery and adaptation that's also an important thing you can send a ten with muscle building signal but if the recovery adaptation signal is something that has now been overwhelmed mm -hmm. because of let's say lack of fitness or whatever and it doesn't matter what your muscle building signal is because your body doesn't care all it need, all it wants to I'll do recover. is all it wants to do is heal so for adam at this point who hasn't trained for 3 months has lost 50 pounds of muscle that he had in the past he's had that okay for adam to send a level 10 muscle building signal is easy mm -hmm. it's he will send a 10 with very minimal effort. After that, there's no more benefit. All he's doing now yeah. is going to be uh, hampering his ability to recover and adapt. Now, well, how if you, you feel today would be a big indication. Yeah. Of so, how I went, huh? so and I knew this right. So, I, and I, this is in the video. I talk about this. Um, I, I did 135 in squats, and the plan when I put it on the bar was 50, three sets of 15. That was the idea. And now I'm doing it. Dylan's recording me and stuff like that, and I'm like <laughs> talking to the the, 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 yeah. the video and stuff while I'm doing it, and I'm like. Um, I probably should just do body weight. And I know that. Because you already feel it. Yeah. And I'm like, I probably should, but I, I just want to do one, 135. So I know I could go squat 225 right now, yeah. but I'm like, ah, let's do 135. And if anything right now, I'm, I overreached a little bit on my legs. Your 135. Legs. And I even, because I feel it, right? I talk about all this. I go, I, I said if I was going to do 15, I didn't. I did tw I stopped at 12 because I could feel it. And then I stopped at uh, 11 and then I stopped at nine. Mm -hmm. And that was it that I did for reps. And if anything, walking in today, I can feel how sore already my legs are that I probably overreach. I probably should have done two sets of probably body weight and maybe one with like 90 or 100 pounds mm -hmm. on there and I would have got the equal amount of benefits. Any more than that, and like to your point, yeah. I'm just going to be so sore, my body's going to need an extra four or five days to recover and that's only going to slow down my progress. The people don't get this. It's a crazy, delicate dance, it, man. It, see, there's an art to it. So yeah. this is the part I, I love. Now that's the key. Yeah. Okay, so I'm so glad you said there's an art to it because it doesn't mean it's easy. It means you, you got to be smart yes. about it. It means you got to understand workout programming, your body, what's appropriate. Be real in tune with your body. This is where it, this is where the art comes into play because someone might be thinking like, okay, what do I do? Just barely do anything? Then someone else says, oh, it doesn't work. You got to go hammer yourself. No, no, no. Uh, the other advantage that Adam has is Adam has been training himself for decades yeah. and he's also trained lots of people for decades. So he's he's going to be far more in tune and that doesn't mean you're on point. You also, you even said yourself, you still did a little yep. too much. Yep. But you're far more in tune with knowing this. What most people end up doing is they end up doing two or three exercises or, excuse me, workouts before they figure out, oh, too much or too little. And that's if they're paying attention. Yeah, or worse, they're chasing that crippling sore yeah. feeling, <laughs> yeah. thinking oh, yeah. that, that they're they're yeah. doing a good job, which to me, that's that's the part that I like to talk about this because it's so wrong. Mm -hmm. It's misinformation. Yeah. This idea that you want to go kill it in your workout, especially at the beginning is so wrong. Like there'll be a place for that. Don't get me wrong. There's going to be a time when raging the ma against machine is in my ears. <laughs> I'm ripping the weight, it's dripping sweat. At the beginning but at all. let me yeah. tell you, that's 
Yeah. That's down the road. That's I'm, I'm no place for that right now. That doesn't make sense to do that right now. It will only slow down my process and overwork myself to to get what less results. That yeah. makes no sense. No to sense me. whatsoever. No sense. So it's it is this delicate dance, and I this is the part I love about this because there is, it's not as simple as some people try to make it mm -hmm. sound. Like just go train hard and just eat. So you can do any workout you want. It's like oh yeah, I guess you can, and that is healthy. I think that's where we get this like. There's a difference between exercising and eating to be a healthier version of yourself. And then there is an art in building the most muscle possible without putting body fat on at the perfect speed. Like, You're threading a needle. Dude. That's right. Yeah. There And there's, there's, and I by no means think I'm a master at it. I'm no. still What's perfecting What's interesting that. about this too is you're, you're probably, your body weight probably isn't going to change for a while so it's because still, you're just going to get leaner while you so build. So what I said to the camera mm -hmm. was the goal is to probably hover maybe five pounds. I said, even though I'm I'm I want to drop my body fat. I say my goal. So I'm at fifteen point eight percent body right. fat. I want to lower my body fat, but I don't want to go down in weight. Right. So the goal would be to kind of hover where I'm at, or allow even about a five to seven pound gain because I'm going to have some water, glycogen, yeah. and stuff like that. So I'm like, I want to see weight stay the same or go up a little bit, but you're going to see my body fat go down. Which, by the way, is going to look dramatic. So the scale might not move much, but you gain 10, lose 10. So 10 pounds of muscle, 10 pounds of body fat. It looks very different. But yeah. I, it's going to be more than that. And I think what you're going to do is what's 90 days. How, how long are you, you doing this? I'm, 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 I hope not to stop again. <laughs> well, I mean, what I mean is like to document. Oh, well, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna at least document maps 15. Like So that the okay. goal for me is to get through. What is, the, that, is that 90 days? It's 90 it's days. It's about right? that, right? Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to document through the, the maps 15 program. And again, like I'm really following that protocol with a little twist because of the rehab. Obviously, mm -hmm. that's more important is for me to make sure that I'm, I'm moving properly. Mm -hmm. um, which it, it also, you know, I think this is a good conversation because I have a buddy, uh, my buddy John, who happens to have the exact same injury and he didn't understand what it was. And uh, I also share this in, in the video that many times people think they have a shoulder issue or shoulder pain when it's something else. So I injured my pec. When, when you have an injury to an area, the body is going to close itself to protect the injury, right? So if I opened up my, my pec after a major injury, that really hurts. So the body closes down and gets tight to try and protect. It's protecting, it, yeah. it's protecting that injury. Well, when it's closed down and protecting that injury for weeks or months because I've been injured for a while, it now it's starting to f form my posture. And so I'm exaggerating it, but I have this rolled shoulder forward. And so, and the way the, the humerus floats in the, the scapula, it you want the scapula to be in this nice, perfect position where it floats real, real nicely, and I can move my arm around. But what's happened is it's rolled forward, and so it's grinding. Yeah, it's grinding on that, and it hurt, and it feels like I got major shoulder pain. But it's not, sh it's not because I have a bad shoulder or something's wrong with my shoulder. Movement pattern. Just it's a, it's a movement pattern. And, and let me tell you, yeah. just by doing the isometrics from the row, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I haven't felt that good in two months yep. with my shoulder. Isn't that funny? It's yeah. what the clients go through when you, when you show them. Oh, yeah. Like, they, they, like you show a client that who's been uh, like riddled with this shoulder injury and you come over and you show them some movements. The, big, the yeah. biggest game changer I ever Get did as a trainer. Again. Uh, yeah. I ever did as a trainer was learn correctional exercise. That right there exploded my business because you could show someone pain relief it's such a short Well, time. especially when it's like something like that where and just like my buddy John who's like striving, I'm like, bro, you don't you're you don't have a bad shoulder. Yeah. It's not your shoulder. It's like your posture. And explain to him like where you're at. I'm like, and what you're feeling is you're feeling that bone, grind mm -hmm. on bone, because mm -hmm. you're out of alignment. But we could do a couple movements. I'll fix that right up. You tell someone that who's been riddled with it for months mm -hmm. or years, and then all of a sudden, then one like one workout, mm -hmm. like I could feel right away. I was like, like literally eighty percent improvement. That's great. It's yeah. hurt me that it's been bothering me that bad. That's good. I knew exactly what to do as soon as I did it. Eighty percent improvement in in literally one that's, hour, that's not awesome. even one hour, right? Awesome. So, how's your training going, Justin? What are you doing right now? Good. Are you um, training here at all? Or are you he's doing I just, both. Yeah, I just yeah, I was telling Adam actually earlier this morning. I I kind of my plan's a little bit different. I mean, similar because it's like low volume, you know, maps fifteen style. But I'll do two compound lifts here at the studio, and then I'll do two at home. Hmm. So I kind of split it that way um, and give myself a little bit more of the recovery in between and whatnot. It's been working out well too. It's because too, I wanted to keep motivating Courtney right now. She's never done the, the 15 style, like mm -hmm. where it's every day. And, and, uh, she's tripping out about she like how it. effective it is. Yeah. yeah how, how effective it is for her. Uh, Cause she's like so used to the crazy high volume and then like not a lot of intensity, you know, uh, started off doing the kickboxing stuff. Right. And so it's like all like, 
about conditioning and thinks that like sweat and work and all this. I've had a long battle with her about like, you know, peeling that back and she's been doing maps in a ball like, then did aesthetic and all that. And now she's doing 15 and it's way more effective because too, we're, we're so constantly like driving the kids to school and doing this. And like, we're all over the place. Uh, so her just to be able to get the two in for the day is wow. like, can do it. You, you know? guys work out together. Then? Yeah. So I'm working out with her when I get home. Uh, Does that work well? Do you guys work out together? Yeah, because like I said, that's why I do it here first. <laughs> You're like, I'm gonna get the good do stuff. the hard stuff gonna, here. Let me get the good stuff done here, and then I'll do the bullshit <laughs> stuff later. Yeah, yeah. Half raises, and then I could grab ass and you know do all that stuff. Where you just, I was like, just gonna say, you perve and it's you know, it's a, like, dude, I uh, swear to God, that's, bro. that's what it turns into. It, I just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every time. Yeah. <laughs> I still get a little bit of work. It's not like you know, uh, like very. Yeah, effective. I walked in on my wife. Did we? I, I bought a hip thrust machine for uh, for for us a little while ago. And she loves using it, so she's out there doing it. And I walked out in the garage the other day, and she's doing it. And I can't know. Oh, can't over. help yourself. Miss Potter, go <laughs> yeah. Hold let on. Let me, let me spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you wearing those Viore yeah. type pants. Like she, gave me the, she gave me the most angry look. Like, mm. <laughs> 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 okay, sorry. It's also early in the morning. You know what I mean? I'm working out. Yeah. I'm when Katrina and I lift together, we don't actually lift together. We like she's. She does fall, her thing. Yeah, we do our like we like a lot of times we'll do that where we're lifting in the garage at the same time. Max is in there because that's convenient for us. But we we tend to be on our our own like our own deal. Although there's probably been a handful of times we've done together, but most time we have just, you guys. Did you guys ever have a lot of clients that were couples? I mean, it's not super yeah. common. I yeah. trained couples. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I did a few, a few like few. that. I had some couples that I trained for a long time. And what's interesting, I don't know if you guys experienced this. When you train a couple, so husband and wife together, they have a specific personality, and you end up becoming friends with them over the years. But then when you meet with them individually. It's almost like it's it's weird. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, your wife's not here. It's <laughs> totally different vibe. Yeah. 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 It's really weird. Uh -huh. I noticed uh -huh. I have there's a couple of couples that I train like that. And it's like when you meet them individually, it's like weird. Yeah. yeah. Because the other half isn't there. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. funny. I, yeah. I never liked training. I never liked training two people at once. I mean, I mean, I did yeah. it because some people like it was a requirement and it was, I didn't have a choice. But I always like so it's hard. Well, it's, dude, I used to train like because I'd train at their house, and so it was like I'd start with like either the wife, or yeah. the, and then it turned into well, I want to join in, and yep. then I was like, all right, I, yeah. mean, I can't say no to that. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't need money. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I it, it's always hard to give them a, a, a you can't individualize as great as yeah. well, right? Yeah. When there's two people, so that made it tough. But at some point, I started to really value the family atmosphere in my studio. This is like the back half of my career. So I would train a couple and then they, they'd have a baby. So then the wife would get pregnant and I continue to train them. Then she'd have the baby and then they'd be like, Hey, what are we going to do? And we have the baby, I'm like bring the baby in. Then they'd bring the baby in. I mean, there's so many kids that have changed their diapers and stuff while mom Uncle, and dad are Uncle out. Sal. But Hey dude, Hey, look from a business perspective, these people never left. Oh, smart. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They They're stay with me forever. Loyal forever. Yeah, but for I that. loved it too. I loved it too. Cause yeah. I loved that atmosphere. It was a small studio. So I really enjoyed I, I mean, Doug, when I trained Doug, Doug, Doug would bring Bree into the studio. Oh, really? Sometimes. Oh, yeah. I would, oh, this yeah. little kid, this cute little kid would come in. God, how and old we would was she back then? Six. Yeah, five or six. Oh, yeah. my God. She was wow. Max's was age. Yeah. Max little. Talk about dating. She would trip. come in. Uh, wow. She was such a, she was just as, you know how you guys, you guys know her personality. She's yeah, super sweetheart. charismatic. Yeah, yeah. She was exactly like that when she was little. She'd come in and then I would set up obstacle courses for her. Remember that? I'd set up like the, the, the foam roller and the thing over here and she'd play while I train. I trained her That's dad. great. Yeah. God, I can't wait. Five, six years old. Yeah. Okay, so how, I, I haven't asked you. It's been uh, how many weeks now? Yeah, the, uh, about Nestor. four weeks. It, four weeks already? Uh, three, three and a half. Are yeah. you missing her like crazy or what? How's it yeah, going? Of course. Uh, she's going, doing well. No, how's so, it going for you? Oh, going for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I deflect to her right away. Yeah. She's doing great. She's fine yeah. anyway, guys. I cry uh, every night. She's good. You should talk <laughs> no, about I'm this. I'm doing pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I stay pretty busy. So just so the audience knows, she went to college, you know, a few weeks ago. Yeah. So uh, basically I have my weekends pretty well free. Uh, I have a lot of hobbies as you well know. Yeah. So yeah. I, I do stay busy. We hang out more You've now. You've added a few. Yeah. I, mean, I get to hang out more now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, I do miss her. She's actually coming next week though. Oh, great. And then the f two weeks after that, we're going to the parents weekend. Um, already. Yeah. Uh, first part of October, we're going to go down there yeah. and, uh, you know, hang out and spend the weekend there. And then, 
we're going to a wedding the week after that. So I'm flying her up to Seattle for a wedding. Oh, that's good. So I'm seeing her actually quite a bit here oh, in okay, the near future. Cool. So right. do, you, do you foresee that like uh, still like either you flying there or flying her back on a pretty regular basis, you think? Yeah, I think we'll try to get it. I mean, more than a month or, or two is, is kind of a long time, you yeah. know, not to see her. You, you know, what kind of sucks about where we live is that the odds that our kids are going to get their first jobs and want to stay here is low. Very so low. Expensive. Very low, yeah. Well, yeah. Like a starter home here is like two yeah, they ain't million gonna buy a house. I, don't know I mean, but there's also a lot of jobs here, though, too, don't you? There so, are, bro. But even a starter job here, you're gonna end up with like four roommates and a two bedroom. You know what I mean? It's so expensive. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's true. It's crazy. This is not an area that people like like graduate college and this is they move back with mom and dad when they do that. Because it's mm -hmm. so damn expensive. I guess I, th I think about that with my kids. Like, where are they going to go? Yeah. I guess that's true. I guess the, my 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 cousins and family members that are younger that they're already they they went Texas exactly. And, yeah, they the other one went to uh, Tennessee. Yeah, so they're going to places that are like are, are way more affordable than here. Yeah. But it's just hard because I mean I guess I don't know I guess it's a double edged sword right? There's like it's really expensive here, but it's also this is where you are going to get the highest income. This is where you are going to get the most. It is, but it's competitive. Yeah. So that you know you. I mean, what would you guys? If, if you guys could do it over again, we don't. No one has kids. You're we're twenty something years old. Yeah. It's in this environment. Do you stay or do you go? What will you do? Because you're close to your family. I can't see you going. Oh, because I got my parents and stuff here. Yeah, yeah. You know, I probably would have left, but come back after having my own kids. But maybe I don't know. This, I, this, you guys know that we don't. None of us really like this area that that much. I mean, I, mean, I, 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 I didn't. I love but the nature of it and everything. Yes. And yeah, but yeah, it's the, <laughs> in terms of me trying to like stack chips and you know save and like feel like I'm I'm moving forward. I feel like this would have been you know not the smartest place to be. See, I would I would have came here still because I because I'm also pretending to be 20 year old me not older 40 year old grumpy ass fucking guy who hates the city <laughs> like that try not to be that guy yeah. answering this yeah. question okay yeah, yeah. Okay? Uh, yeah, so yeah. Hard. <laughs> well you know as we, we always and, like the odds against us kind of thing yeah too. so i, would, so I wasn't that here. i wouldn't be afraid of 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 high prices i i like uh and i as a i hated the country so i came from i came from you know Bumfuck Egypt. Yeah, so I was uh -huh. like, I was like, I wanted to is go to a real place. Though? It is. It is, a, it is a real place. We, we actually, we, yeah, yeah. yeah no, we, Timbuktu is real. So is no, Bumfuck. Bumfuck is, Bumfuck is too. B U M. It's, really? it's not spelled, it's probably like P H, yeah, you know. Yeah, look it up. U M P H. I'm pretty sure it is. I, 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 Timbuktu is in so I looked into it. And I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure, sure Bumfuck, I'll back Bumfuck, Bumfuck, Bumfuck Egypt, I think, is a real is a real place. I think. This might be a mistake. Anyways. If it not, it was Timbuk. Hey, Doug, Anyways, hey, I lived I lived in Timbuk too. If it wasn't if it wasn't bumfuck, right? Yeah, I'm getting something different. Uh, uh, no. Yeah what, yeah, what are you getting? Done? It's a slang. brought to you by it's the a, guy who brought yeah, you it's bum a, fights. It's what, bum what came up with your search engine. It's real quick. Uh, a military <laughs> slang term. Oh, okay. It just means the middle of nowhere. It's a, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, did you guys, did it's you, did you guys start him. watching Masters of Air? No. no, so good. It looks good. Yeah, it's it looks good. really good. Is that and on I'm, Apple? I can't. Yes, I no, cannot no. believe someone didn't. Uh, you guys will all love it. I know your taste. What is it? It's uh, it's all that. What's the what were the bombers called? The 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 all B fifty two. Yes, the B fifty yeah. twos. It's their their whole story, and it's oh, all it stays nice. true My to date on those, to yeah. dates and to actual real fights that happened and how many planes came back and didn't. But it's all mm. actors. So Wait, it's like it's, the Memphis Bell and all that. They just they did an incredible. Yeah, they did an incredible no. job with actors and telling the story and the realism of it and just parts that like man when the guys went down and they got caught in the in the camps and like they do have a, you, have you really guys ever heard the stories of, i don't know if it was the bombers you probably know this you're, you're like a, a world war ii fanatic but did you know that it when look like it I, you just said yeah. something that yeah. i didn't know no, so i'm yeah, like he knows everything i do know something. there was a when the when the planes would come back they would look at the the bullet holes on yeah. the planes mm -hmm. And they'd say, oh, shit, okay, this is where we need to strengthen the planes. And they'd strengthen and bolster those areas. Yeah. But it didn't help. And that's because the bullet holes, the planes of the bullet holes that came back, that's where they could get shot and come back. The other areas where they'd get shot, the planes would go down. They didn't come mm -hmm. back. Oh, so they yeah. had to go, oh, wait a minute. Actually, it's all these other areas that aren't getting shot that we need to cover. Dude, the part I tripped out with Katrina, mm. I was telling her last night, because we're on episode, like, uh, I think six now. And it just keeps getting better and better, which is why I'm telling you guys, you got to watch it. Because I liked it right out the gates, and then it keeps getting better and better. And uh, I'm like, God, could you imagine you and your buddies in no. your 20s? Nope. Bro, and they, they, when they sent these bombers out, like... Many times, less than half come back, yep. and every time, and you go, guys would go on, 
before you could get like like leave, you'd have to do 25 or 30 missions. <laughs> oh my God. 25, 30 times. You're literally flying over. It's like part of the process where the, they, they, the bombs start going off and firing at you, all the, all the uh, you know, ground ground uh, artillery yeah. and stuff of like that. Yeah. And you just, you're flying into it knowing. Yeah, it's exploding all around you. Yeah. yeah. And you know, half of you is not coming back. Have and you, you go 25 times. Listen. Like, holy shit. Listen, we are, we are really fortunate that we don't live in those. Have you seen, I mean, look at the pictures of these young men on Dude. those, like those, those sea to land, like, uh, vehicles, right? Coming in from like, like in Normandy where they were coming. Yeah. Just getting shore. mowed down. Mm. And they're in your, you see pictures of these kids in there and they're children. Like these are kids, man. They're like 18, oh, I know. I 19 year old. You look at like baby faces yeah. and you know, they're going to open that gate and you're and just, just going to get blasted. Yeah. Like that's why I was t that's what I'm telling here. I'm like, you do you understand the the mindset and then the buy in to the country that the, the kids had to have in order to go do that? Like yeah. to go and, and then and then not just do it once, but go like again and again and yeah, just watching crazy. your friends die and go, I'm gonna go back again. Crazy. And then even having missions where they're telling you shit like, Yeah, we're using you as the bait. So oh we're God. we're sending you guys over sending you guys over as a bait because they're draw fire. Yes, yeah. to draw the fire. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. You know, and then like, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll you go. You just chalk it Wild. up to the glory of, of the country. Yeah, yeah. dude. I, we're, we're very I well like, done. I, I feel like you're you're that guy because you've seen you've heard those speeches, right? There's like a group of the soldiers and like, all right, look to your right, look to your left. Like two of you are not coming back, and you're every guy's like, oh, I'm the one that's yeah. Coming back. yeah yeah no no yeah, probably not no no that's crazy yeah that's crazy no you I guys like imagine it. yeah you guys yeah. got you guys got to watch it it's 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 definitely a, a a worthwhile watch and I'm all I'm all sucked in on it for sure those kind of those kind of those kind of shows shows always get me like in a weird mood because i just think so much about what that must have been like i it hear got, stories from my grandfather my grandfather on my dad's side mm -hmm. he didn't serve uh in the military he was he was a he was a, a boy poor in sicily but when the americans were stationed in sicily remember during world war ii they came through sicily right when they were stationed there he remembers the american soldiers were nice and they were friendly <clears throat> but the kid like him and his buddies were poor they'd go and try and take food and he said, I think I told you guys this one time. When I went there, I was 13. This is one of the first, this is when I went there for the first time and we could understand what was going on before that was two, right? So 13, I'm sitting there talking to my, my grandfather, my Sicilian grandfather. And he goes, I, I know English, he says to me. I know an English word in Sicilian. I said, what is it? And he goes, and he says this, this long sentence that sounds something like, you motherfucker, come back, or something like that. And I'm like, is he saying, what is he saying? My dad's cracking up. And I'm like, what's he saying? My dad goes, that a soldier yelled that at him because he stole the soldier's bread and ran off. And the guy was yelling at him, you motherfucker. And it, he remembered it. He remembers the, yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it just repeats it. Just, yeah, and we were laughing, you know, like, what? he's like, I took the food. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because I was so my God. <laughs> they were poor so Oh, you know? my God. Dude. I know. Oh, it's crazy. I know. <laughs> it's cool. Like, well, now that, uh, like, my dad has been able to spend time with my kids, I'm actually receiving the benefit of it because I get stories he never told me because mm -hmm. he was always like real reserved to tell me, you know, anything about Vietnam and like his experience. What did your dad do? He was, on the, he was on the boats, right? PBR boats. That's yeah. Right. So he, what he are actually, PBR boats? Tell me. Bro, did they, they, they did a lot of like tours where they had to go out and come yeah. back. I saw a lot of shit. You'd love these boats. They're so sophisticated. They could stop on a dime. They're like the most, most horsepower you, you could imagine uh, on these. Like they had to like, build them so and they actually tested them out in the delta here oh interesting um, because of it was similar to you know like moving around through all these like Channels. rivers and swamps yeah. and all that kind of stuff and so it was like you know it could it, it didn't it didn't need much depth oh, okay so it could like kind of raise up and out and it, and it, it could like really carve it anyway they had these huge like turret guns oh, on there right here huh yeah, you first. If you've watched a Vietnam movie, you've seen one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, definitely have seen those. Yeah, yeah. Like I didn't know they're called. Now, see, yeah, those are called PBR. Apocalypse Now. That's a great Apocalypse movie. Now. Yeah. My what's, dad what's PBR watch that stand movie. for, Doug? Do you know? Uh, patrol boat river patrol boat. River maybe. patrol boat. Yeah, so okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Boat. So yeah, he was on there. Which Iron, he's six seven guy, you know, and it's like he's out there. It's like you know, big target, big target, <laughs> but it. But what he was able to get out of a lot of like combat, he got into a lot of combat, but like his way out was, uh, he was a, a craftsman and he was like, he was trying to, he was trying to become like a, a um, uh, a wood shop teacher. And so he actually like built a lot of things on the base and like fixed all kinds of stuff, uh, for, uh, bridges and all mm -hmm. these kinds of things and worked with engineers. But, 
Uh, yeah. So he, he had quite a lot of like stories that he would tell the kids that I was like kind of peering in on and they'd tell me back. And so I've got like more stuff about like actual combat. Oh, interesting. That he's like now willing to talk about. So it's taken a long time for him to be able to talk about it. Did he, does he talk, did he have like PTSD from it? Does he, does he, did he like suffer from anything he like that? Did. He doesn't like to admit it because like I until, you know, it was like they're doing this, they were doing this big, um, kind of insurance thing through the vet. Uh, veterans, um, whatever you call that, um, uh, service. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. But, um, so he, he had to go through that and then do all these interviews and then he, he kind of was, it, they kind of pulled it out of him and then they actually, like, he got some kind of grant because of what they experienced in being exposed to certain chemicals and all that kind of stuff. Like he was in there, like agent orange, all these things were around him constantly. Uh, so he and napalm and all that kind of stuff. Um, so he actually like fought, like filed with the insurance with all that and was able to get through and get some money back. But, um, yeah, like he finally admitted, like it was like very traumatic. Like he's seen people die right in front of him. He's seen people get shot in the face. If there's, yeah. a, you're going to be traumatized. Yeah. You are going to be traumatized. How that how you affects deal your life. With it, right. How you deal with it is the only difference. How it affects your life. That's there's differences there. But if you don't get traumatized by mm -hmm war and then they're your crazy person yeah i mean like, literally, literally you are a crazy person how did you he's such a man of faith it was like that was his his course. north star and like it really saved them like in terms of his psychological health so i mean he at least had that for him so to get through it but. such a different time we live in huh yeah <sighs> You know, like that's why I think that's all I like. I thought about when I'm like looking at these there's young, no, their really, kids, brother, twenty something mm -hmm. years old, that that were going and, and putting their lives on the line like that, and the, the things that we complain about today. And I know today's weird, like we have a lot of stuff going on and whatever. But it's like, man, I don't know. Would you trade that for that? Would no. you trade that for that time? <laughs> no, like before my before my grandfather passed away, he he would say he would say things, and he'd say something like, <clears throat> "People are it's so easy now. People invent problems." For themselves that's how easy it is yeah. like when i was a kid we didn't we couldn't worry about that stuff because we had to get food you know yeah we had to find shelter or we had to deal with the you know whatever so i don't know i mean i don't you i mean i think that what's that what is it that it's not a proverb but what is oh, that good, saying good the, man create uh, no yeah I don't know what I'm uh, good yeah. times good times create hard times create good men good top men create good times good times create weak men yeah weak men create bad times yeah i think that's a uh, pretty true mm -hmm. pretty i mean true it's story. pretty much followed that timeline We're forever sure hasn't it mm -hmm. yeah I mean, it, the weak men uh, face <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe <laughs> we might a lot be of there, weak, dude. weak dudes out there i'll be honest physically literally uh, these grip strength uh, studies they come out with are, are so oh, this weird. Is embarrassing well oh, i mean if you figured like there's nobody's really doing anything physical with you know hands. what's how we started this conversation too talking about uh you know my journey and lifting and building muscle and yeah. stuff like that like how much do you think that is like of uh, and what our experience with like the underconsumption of like eating protein and hitting your protein targets. Do you think that uh, the fact that we're way less physical paired with like our diet being so high on like carbohydrates and sugars and things like that, that and processed foods that that is, I, I mean, you had to think just 60, 70 years ago, whole food diets you was could, more the norm and processed food was more yes. of a luxury. Yeah. You, you could, you could place obesity on the on how our food has changed and then you could place our lack of muscle lack of strength um la you know lack of mobility uh osteoporosis that kind of stuff on lack of activity yeah so it's two mm. things Physical that demand. also like there's a there's some crossover there right lack of muscle contributes to yeah slower but metabolism makes massively contribute right but but the the, the lack of strength because i mean look you go back like again i'll talk about my grandfather's generation i mean yeah they didn't eat processed food but they didn't have a great diet like mm -hmm. my grandfather didn't have food half the time. And when he did, it was like beans and pasta and nutrient deficiencies were really common. Yeah. I mean, you, if, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, if you meet some of my old relatives from Sicily, they're all like four eleven, four ten. Like, yeah. but it's not because we're short. Obviously look at me, I'm six foot. All my yeah. cousins are tall. Yeah. So there's nutrient deficiencies, mm -hmm. but the strength thing was just an activity. They just, you know, you did things every day, not because you went to the gym, but just because that's how life was. And so you're just stronger. You're just a lot stronger. And yeah. so when they do these grip strength tests on college aged males and they're finding like an 18 year old today has the same grip strength, average grip strength as a 60 year old <laughs> in 1982. Oh my God. Now this doesn't mean that the strongest of us are weak. 
you still have very high performers. The extremes are still great. Like you still get guys breaking records and strength and stuff like that. So you still get yeah. strength, strong guys. Yeah, the but that's aver- also the average is bringing average us down. Average is way over here. Though. But I think that's also what makes people not realize how bad it is. Yes, because yeah. you hear, oh, so and so just broke a record, right. deadlifted whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're stronger than ever. It's like, well, he is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that yes. one guy yeah, over there. He is, yeah. but the majority of us are not. I was looking at even the um the the body fat chart because I shared that yeah. I shared my my results from the body spec thing or whatever and uh, on there too is like uh like where where my body fat percentage is for my age in what percentile or whatever and you know I, i'm at 15.8 percent, yeah. which i consider like really out of shape for me i'm in still the top 10 percent yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're better than 90 percent <laughs> so like, that's well you know that's a scary thought to think like i've I, how under muscled i am right now how out of shape i am right listen now. it wasn't always like this uh i've been strength training all of us have been strength training for decades but when I'm around 45-year-old men now, the average 45-year-old man doesn't exercise, doesn't strength train, hasn't for a long time. And I, I you know, you shake their hand, you meet them or whatever. It's it's like, man, I feel like if I wanted to with one hand, I could grab you yeah. and, and yeah. manipulate you and do whatever I want with you. Yeah. Like it's not a good place to be. Um, strength training is exploding among the younger generation, I think precisely because of this. I think young men are like, I have to lift weights i have to lift weights part of it's aesthetic but part of it's also i think they're identifying the, the positive the, the yeah. positive side of this or the or the, the i guess the, the way i look at it the optimistic way i look at this is that man if you're a young young man or woman in this case growing up at this time you're uh you have a massive advantage if you do bro yeah if, you, <laughs> if you're a 30 year old dude you and you lift weights yeah. you're gonna be way more jacked than most dudes yeah you know. you'll stand out like way more yeah you know than other guys so no totally. i know no. and being fit in general we'll do yeah. that yeah. anyway I, I got a comment we, we uh, you know we just try we just got these better biome gummies from organifi we're supposed to talk about them but i'm gonna talk about this again because i've been using it consistently have you guys been using these i haven't the apple i cider. like them They're very apple very, cider yeah <laughs> yes so i've been using them and i've been reading more about apple, apple cider taste. vinegar it helps with blood sugar uh, it helps promote good bacteria kill bad bacteria my digestion is pretty damn good but you know what else i noticed that if i take it before i eat it blunts my appetite a little bit so i looked it up and that's what apple cider vinegar has been shown to do uh, okay so that's that it actually helps oh, with appetite, appetite control hmm. for some people i mean i'm excited i'm almost to a full bag of gummy bears so it's like oh almost- yeah <laughs> Oh we're, we've now we're now sponsored we got enough gummies going on that i can almost have a full bag of gummy bears right now yeah. <laughs> just eat all my pills yeah. eat my pills just, but, anyway. i was gonna ask you adam uh speaking of sponsors you're the only one that uses the caldera bar soap right i, I do I, I mean i've got all my friends Not on it yeah, i use it yeah. oh, Doug, you on the serum okay i haven't used it yet come on so bro it's, deal with it? you know it's the it is the okay you, have you ever had a soap lather as well never right no, no. So it's, a, it's, I did use it once in Truckee. I did. It's you, the really, really small bubbles of, uh, I did bring one up there. I is it know. like, uh, uh, like, you know how Guinness like has like yes. really small, like the really thick foam? Like oh yeah. Like, like a oh, I don't know. That's a, I don't, I don't know if that's what I like. I don't know the, 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 the science it's behind it. It's a nice, yeah, cause foamy. it's a lot of bubbles. Yes, together, cause it's, it's like a, it, that's it, what I mean. It has yeah, the best feel. lather I've. I've ever used every any bar of soap I've ever used in my life, hands down. And the fact that it's a product that I know is all natural and stuff like that, it's like a win. It's a win-win. Because to me, here's the thing. Okay, I have I have other brands. We've had other sponsors that have had soap and stuff, blah, blah, blah that I've used. And the all natural ones. One, oh, yeah, I either hate the smell of them, or two, it's like rubbing a fucking brick on your arm. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's you like, you're like skin scrubbing off. it and yeah. you get like a little bit of like, I have a few lather. Of those you can't get any like, lather. Yeah. And so I just, and I don't, it doesn't matter. And I know that, I know there's a lot of science behind like the toothpaste bullshit and it's not that real. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, but you know, but it, we, it's, it makes me feel like I have cleaner that's teeth. That's not the point. Yeah. Can so we just say this? Like it makes me feel clean. like part, my body's cleaner. Look, part of it is the experience as well. And it makes the experience yeah, better. I just would, who okay who would like a bar of soap that creates zero lather? That's Can how, you imagine that. Hey, like, a lot of those, a lot of those all natural, almost idea. all those all natural bars are like that. Have you yeah. ever bought them? Like the you know, yeah, the you're right. Doesn't really, one? They never lather really well. They just slime. And so <laughs> I <laughs> yes, they slime. <laughs> That's exactly what they do. <laughs> well, I just don't like lo- looking ah. down at my body, going like I think I got everything. Yeah. Where it's like if it's all lather, it's like I'm covered. I'm like, was that a banana slime? If I'm a complete soap bubble, I know I'm clean. I've got everything. You know what I'm saying? 
and so what? did you guys did you guys use bar soap when you guys were kids? Is that what you yeah, guys yeah, bought? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We used my mom used to we buy poor, yeah. my mom either bought uh yeah, the cheap green oh, Irish, bro, Irish. It was either Irish Spring. Yeah, yeah that was when she was like splurging. Yeah. Yeah. We, or, wait, when we were no when we were splurging with Safeguard. Say oh yeah, that's yeah. what yeah, yeah that was when we that was really splurging. Yeah. We then, or ivory, pan, pan the white, team. the no. white one, the white bar, ivory, yeah. Yeah. and it would always make me so dry as a kid. I thought that's what happened. I ivory reminds me of my grandma. My grandma used to oh, use that, she? and so when I'd visit her, so that isn't that funny how we have smells that like, oh, tie herbal to essence. I'm still like bought in. That's because of the commercial. <laughs> commercials. That's because of the organic. Hey, some one of the girl best, with really long blonde hair. The, oh, I was, was going like, to bring up to you guys another company I just saw do some good ads. Hey, you use that. To, you use that on yourself, didn't you? Who? No, who shampoo. What are some companies oh, yeah. right now that are that at, like? Okay, that's iconic, right there. Yes. You just like a, an ad. Who's who's doing that now? Like, who does good ads? I have one that I, I mean, just, Old Spice is like ridiculous. Like, I love some of them. Are funny, dude. Are they still? I haven't seen a new one. I in haven't a while. seen a long. I haven't not seen, in a long time, but yeah, I haven't seen a new one in a long time. Pennzoil. Is doing good. Pins, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm super impressed wow. with them. I mean, I'm, I like car stuff. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. But I mean, you're a little obsessed right now. It's just a little bit. A little bit yeah. bro. Where are we? Hey. Excuse you. Hey. Hey, hey, listen. I know because I get obsessed over shit too. I know uh, how we all are, dude. Know, it's, yeah. a, it's a, it's uh, a, it's our. You're strength. like an expert in a real short period of time. <laughs> <laughs> like right. thirty days later. It's just strength in our. You're weakness. my car guy now. Yeah, yeah. Strength in yeah. our weakness. You know what I'm saying? When we get, when any of us get, I mean, let's, are you gonna learn how to like work on cars and stuff too now? No, hopefully, just drive them really just well. Drive, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just drive them really well. I don't. He doesn't want to see yeah. dirty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you look? Hey, <laughs> you can don't want to use the soap. Fuck off, guy. You can use the Caldera soap. <laughs> I don't want to break a nail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah get out of here. Hey. I would. Hey, I tell you what. I would. I would. Maybe. Maybe uh, in my later years, I could get it. Like, I'm not against like learning how to turn a wrench. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I. I just never had. I don't have a good friend or a dad. Okay, so I didn't have a dad. Oh, <laughs> fuck. See, just against me. I know. I, I started that. I feel bad. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> You didn't have a dad to teach So, yeah, I didn't have a dad teach me how to, uh, how to turn uh, a wrench, or maybe I would, you know, be into that stuff. Uh, uh, but I'll, no, I, I'll teach you. I would, so I would love, <laughs> I would, thanks, daddy. daddy. I, I would love to be able to do that and to work on my own cars. And it is, it is uh, such a bummer that my 68, I can't, you know, I part of why I don't. See, now that you could work on. Yeah, if, if you, you knew what you were doing. Right. Yeah. And, and because I yeah. don't. You and anybody who's uh, owned uh, old school uh, knows that like it's constant, constant. There are those things rattle loose, and there's always something like you know, like I mean, this thing is. Dude, mine that's why like, mine's still in the shop, and bro, I haven't even touched it. And yet. I can't wait for you to have these stories because this is this was this is my experience. I mean, mine's pristine, right? It's beautiful, right? And uh, you know, you if I drive it three times in a row, by the third time I'm back in the driveway, there's like a bolt. And this yeah. center of the <laughs> just a huge puddle. Yeah, yeah and okay. I have no idea where it goes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, so I, my, yeah. I have like a rule. Like once I see three bolts, it's time to bring it three, in. <laughs> yeah, three bolt yeah, rule. Three, three bolt rule. <laughs> once once it hits three bolts, I got to bring it into somebody. And be like, hey, could you? And I got to pay for someone yeah. to check it all like, over. These are probably important. Yeah, yeah. yeah bolts are like fluids. See, but. I have a romantic ver like vision of of muscle cars, which is probably super off. Like my version of a muscle car is. I'll get it and it's all fixed and good, and then I'll just drive it around. Yeah, it doesn't work that oh, way. Damn. Like, so that's the that's the part. I, maybe I, day one. So yeah. I thought the same thing, Sal. I thought, oh well, if I buy one that's and like it's all set up, yeah, brand new engine, you just cruise around, new, yeah. Your and it's uh, and it does like mine runs r runs really good, but it does. It still rattles things loose, and there's just you got to check fluids. Unless and, you do one of those rest of mods where you actually put it on top, like the chassis and everything is and a brand new, new car. Yeah. yeah, and you just put the old frame on. That's you, old, so that's uh, probably what I. Would, on now that's are you considered like like a real muscle car owners? They look at you like you put. I mean, yeah, but like who cares? There are a bunch of old guys that just sit there and look at their car. <laughs> Like, <laughs> they all like high and mighty it's a, it's about every car show that we go to. Yeah, every car show, they're just like, what do you got in there? And they kick your tires and uh, <laughs> it's like, you just beat it, you know? Like, <laughs> I, I do think there's, I think, I think uh, now, like, everybody puts an LS motor in there. So it's kind of like a common theme right now. All my buddies give me a hard time for not still having a carbureted engine. You got, um, dude. I'm about having fun. Like, like, let's beef that thing up. Let's I get mean, the horsepower up. Let's like make sure everything you know connects to the ground. I got what, good suspension. Like, I'm I can play you know loud music. Do, you know let's what I want to do, with the guys? I am agree. I love that. Yeah, I, 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 that's that's what makes me think about doing it. But you know what I really want to do with the guys? I heard you could buy cheap Miatas and race the shit. Yes, out of them. yes. 
They're like little go karts. So my my yeah. buddy, I heard you could take them on a track. I, <laughs> Just I would can hate I, to be seen. Bro, you would look hey, like no, 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 like listen, Koopa. listen. Hey, he, would, he would look like Mario Kart. Bro, so. he was throwing <laughs> turtle shells. At my guys. my two buddies that uh, I, uh, I I rent garage space around the corner from my house. These two guys, right? That I've, and I've got to know them over the last couple of years, and really really cool guys. And they're all like these guys were worked in race pits. Both of them like oh. race car drivers. Like they got crazy cool collections. Like everything you could think of: rally cars, indie cars, street cars, all kinds of stuff. So obviously very well versed. I'm like the the new kid who's like trying to like get involved in all of it, ask all the questions and stuff. And you know, one of the things we're talking about is like tracking the cars. And he's like, you know, and he tells me, yeah, Adam, you know, you love your cars. You don't want to go. You don't want to track those things. The amount of wear and tear on your tires, your brakes. Your, he's like your pebbles all thrown all over your thing. He's like, you know what you do? He goes, I'll tell you right now. You go get yourself a five thousand dollar Miata. And you can race, you could tr you could track that thing all out, and you'll have just as much fun. Yeah. You'll come sliding around the corners nice the Sarah same McLaughlin way. Sticker, says, you'll back. get the same, <laughs> you'll get the same exhilaration you will in that as this crazy over the top supercar. And he goes, and then you don't give a shit that it got a big old ding in it or something. Come on, broke. bro, you don't think that'd be fun? Yeah, it would be fun. I like I said, I still want to be like filmed doing it. No, we, actually, <laughs> we don't gotta show nobody. <laughs> yeah. I'm down. I'll put I'm a helmet so on that's like you know. Just all visored out. You know, there's dude, a whole, you know, so there's a whole, uh, so I looked into this, right? So I looked into like getting my race license, like the, like the amateur yeah. super beginner. Yeah. And that's how the, it, that, that's like the first one is like Miatas. Like, I think, okay, oh, so they, you just jump right past the go karts thing. That, that's oh, I mean, you could go go karts. Yeah. I don't think that's even a, a real class. I don't think, or at least I don't think anyone takes. I that think class. they do. I mean, I think that's how look most, at the NASCAR guys. They that's, start yeah, there most then, kids all st kids start through go karts and they work their way up. I'm hoping yeah. I can at least handle a fucking Miata, Justin. So <laughs> But like the first, like, I think you can handle their that. first like real race league is like yeah. is like the Miatas, and it's like a real thing. And a lot of these guys that I know that have done like all of it yeah. actually end up back there. And for that reason, they're just like you get this really expensive. Because you could put you yeah. could, you could put a cage in there, you could yeah. soup it up, and and, 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 and the, the same thrill of sliding around a corner, and, uh, tires scream. Yeah. You get all that on a track with that. So yeah, they've, <laughs> they've <laughs> I just picture Justin in there. So. I did the same thing too, but they they've convinced me that that's. That's the move. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously picture like King I, I, I like do. sticking hey, out. Big old, I see Justin with a big old blonde. I'm going to get an extra big, big helmet, dude. <laughs> <laughs> can you like race a, you like, like, a, a like a Mario character? Can we, yeah. like, can we all yeah. race at the same time? I'll, I'll yeah. lean into that. Yeah. I'll put a big yeah. monkey suit on. I don't can we care. bump into each other? No, I can't. No, totally. That, and that's the other thing, too. People be, into each other? people be bumping into each other. Now you do demolition derby. Like, I'm in. Oh, is that something you can sign up for? Can I anybody just feel like that? you can just do it, right? You just like show you up just with a joker, a, yeah, and just plow into just, just. I think so. I don't think there's. I don't a lot know. Of, I'll look into. I don't it. think there's a lot of restrictions. Watsonville, <laughs> they do the figure eights where you oh, can, yeah. like, and you see like <laughs> collisions I, all the time. So it's I, awesome. I almost talked Jessica. We yesterday we were driving. I saw a school bus, an old school bus. And I just had this thought. I'm like, what if we bought a school bus? Seriously, think oh, this. Oh, bro. Wait, what, what if you bought you're a school bus? trying to have bus? more kids. That's what that is. He's no, setting listen, the table. Listen, calm That's down. That's what that is. Setting the table. Thank that you. is setting the table Thank for more kids listen, right there. What listen. if we bought a school bus? School bus. Emptied the it out. What do you need a school bus yeah. for, bro? Empty it yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. And you can make it like really cool in there. Definitely have a lot of seats, but you can put like whatever you want. It'd be fun, right? You have a school bus drive around, drive around the country. No? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Different ideas are fun. Yeah. Definitely different ideas. We're good. We got a shout out today? Yeah. Who do we got today? Let's actually let's shout out the uh, the show that I just so everybody knows where to go and find it. So Masters uh, Masters of the Air or Masters of Air, one of those, one of those uh, on Apple TV. So totally worth a watch. Check that out. All right, look, you've heard the phrase "you are what you eat," but that's not quite correct. It's actually "you are what you digest." Your food has to get broken down and turned into molecules that you can use: proteins into amino acids, carbohydrates into glycogen fat, into fatty acids. What does this? Digestive enzymes. Look, if you're having issues with digestion, taking digestive enzymes could make your food more effective, could help you with your recovery, build more muscle. You get less bloat, less digestive issues. There's a company we work with called Bioptimizers. They have the best digestive enzymes on the market. Go check them out. Go to bioptimizers.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 10, get 10% off your order. All right, back to the show. First question is from Owlpatty78. I'm using a GLP-1 and doing the MAPS GLP-1 program, but I feel like it's not enough. I've done anabolic and aesthetic before and love those. I already walk as well, but feel like I need more strength training exercises. What should I do? This seems like a common theme that we're even hearing in our GLP-1 group. It is. So, okay, so I would have I would need more more information before I can answer this. 
properly, but I'm going to guess that uh, that the that the GLP one program is the right amount of volume for you. So if you're if you just started a GLP one and your calories are really low, your tolerance for exercise stress is also very low, and it doesn't take much. And, and what we're trying to do in the beginning stages is maintain muscle. Building muscle on super low calories is almost impossible, yeah. but we might be able to keep it why you lose weight and what we don't want to do is overtrain you because that will definitely make you lose muscle. Now, here's another little side note. If you're exercising properly, meaning it's appropriate, it's the perfect amount. It's the perfect amount for you to progress, to get stronger, build muscle, burn body fat. If you're training appropriately, you will more often than not feel like I can do more. Yeah. I'm not doing enough. You should not feel like, boy, I can't do any more. Oh, that's about as much as I could do. That's not the, that means you're doing too much. That's the, that's a, a much smarter gauge in terms of how much you should do. You should definitely feel like you're, you, I you mean, can do this more. is a, this actually aligns really well with the first half of this episode totally. today. Um, th this is, I absolutely could have done way more exercises, but why? And I have no idea where this person is at calorie wise, but if you're on a GLP one, I'm going to guess yeah. it's really low. Low, yeah, real low. And so that's you have people have to understand and factor this. And this is where and we're coaching these people in, in our GLP one course, right? So there's fifty something people that are in there going through this. And this is a one of the when we do our coaching calls, this is one of the common themes. Is there like some of these people going through the program? They're like, hey. This seems like so little amount for us. And then you ask them how many calories they're eating. They're like, "Oh, yeah, I'm eating like 1,100 calories a day." It's like, uh, "Yeah, it's plenty. You're, you're not you're not going to go build a ton of muscle yeah. with that low of calorie. All we want, all we're really trying to do when you're that low of calorie is hold on to your hold muscle. Hold on to muscle is maintain it. And you training harder and more volume is not going to help you keep more muscle. Like we want to just send a, a signal to to maintain it or hold on to it." You training yourself so hard that you're getting sore on 1,100 calories. You don't got any. You got no building blocks to go build that muscle. You're yeah. not going to. Look, I'm going to be clear, very clear. When I train clients, uh, half the time I would start out training people once a week. The other half, twice a week. Okay, if it was twice a week, there was a lot of correctional exercise priming involved in the workout. So really, if you look at an hour session with me. And you include warm up, and because these are new people, yeah, maybe thirty minutes, thirty five minutes of actual strength training. Okay, every single person I train in those early stages built muscle. They all did, even people in a calorie deficit. And that's all we did. That's all we did. I never trained people more than that in the the back half of my career. Now, early in my career, I thought the more the better, and I didn't get as great a results at all. People worked way more, yeah. way harder. I hammered people, and they got worse results. It wasn't until I figured out later on the right dose is the best dose, and the right dose feels like you could do more. That's just about, even if you're advanced. Again, to be clear, even if you're advanced with your training, you're a fitness fanatic. You work out consistently. You eat right. You've been strength training for five years plus. Eighty-five percent of your workouts are going to feel like you could do more. There's that 10, 15 percent where you push yourself, but that means eight to nine out of ten workouts are going to feel like this. You should leave the gym being like, "Well, I could do more." 90% of the time, that's what it's going to feel like, even if you're advanced. Now, where this, there, there, there could be a, a um, you know, a, a different person here. Okay, let's play out the, the, the probably only other piece of advice we'd give if you were at, uh, say, 2,800 calories, you're still eating a lot and you have really sustainable energy, uh, uh, energy then maybe. And you were been working out this whole time? Yeah, and you've been working out this whole time. Then, then sure. Yeah, then sure, maybe you can, you could handle more volume. Um, but, yeah, I'm guessing if you're on a GLP-1 and if it's effective, it's probably... The most we've seen so far that we've seen in the group that we're working with, uh, calories were, what, 2,200? Mm -hmm. I think it was the highest that we heard. Most highest. people were in the in the like 1,500 15, 11, range. Yeah. Most people. Yeah. Uh, it was men and women. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. So, my guess is that you're you're too low to be doing a bunch more unless you were that high. And then if you're yeah. that high and you It's and counterproductive you at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, like you're, what you're trying to do is preserve muscles. So, you got to... You know, bring the volume down. Next question is from Garth Cahill. You speak about the three, two, one sleep protocol, but what do you do or suggest for people uh, to do in the last hour without screens? And for people who have made watching TV to so fall asleep their routine, what suggestions do you have to fill this space until you're ready to fall asleep? Oh, wow. So three, Read. Two, three, two, one is mm. what is it? Three hours before bed, don't eat. Two hours before, don't drink. 
and then one hour before, turn off all screens and electronics, right? Yeah, that's yeah, sorry, okay. I had a funny, I, was like, I, make, I make movies in my mind. Yeah, no, <laughs> what, movie, what is that from? That? What is it, what is that from? Oh, that's from Tropic Thunder. That's, oh, oh that's what I was sorry. like, what is that from? Inappropriate that. reference. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. That movie, I don't know how that's not being canceled. <laughs> Such a good movie. Love it. Um, so, all right. What do you do in the last hour? Read. Um, yeah, reading is great, but but I'm going to give you more of a general answer that might help you pick, right? You want to do something in the hour leading up to bed that will bring the central nervous system energy down, that brings the energy down, puts you in a calm, relaxing state. So typically say people would say, read. All right, read a book. Read a book with some low-level light, and you're great. But sometimes that might, and usually that's a good idea, but what if you read a horror novel? or mystery, you know, suspense, and it gets you all amped up, or maybe you're reading a, a nonfiction about some crazy thing that happened in the past, and now it's keeping you up at night. So that can also be a problem. So think to yourself, what will get my central nervous system, my body, my, my energy to come down to a nice, relaxed state? Um, I'll give one piece of advice that works for almost anybody. Static stretching, mild to moderate static stretching, where you're breathing and relaxing while moving through the stretches is a mm -hmm. great way to get the body into this parasympathetic state. When you're stretching in a, in a static stretch and you're breathing through, and I have to say breathing because if I static stretch and hold my uh, breath. Real slow breaths. It's yeah. like whew, while I'm doing the stretch. What that does is first off, as your muscle starts to lengthen, and you'll feel this, like you can barely touch your toes, and if you hold it for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, you're breathing, and all of a sudden you can go past your toes and you keep getting longer and longer. The CNS is literally chilling out. It's literally relaxing its grip on the areas that you're stretching. So you do full body stretching on the floor with deep breathing. Um, in my experience with my clients and myself, that's like the, one of the most guaranteed. In fact, if I have trouble sleeping and I've exhausted all my methods, I'll do that before going to bed. It's almost always works uh, every single so time. So I, I wanted to look, I looked up Garth. I just wanted to see who we're talking to because I feel like my advice is, would be different based off of your age or what, like what you're into or what that. So, uh, uh, looks like a semi-pro, uh, baseball player, also PhD student, uh, young guy, like in his twenties. So, you know why he's struggling with this? He sounds like a high achiever. Uh, totally. Yeah. Like, what do I do in that hour? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's such a waste. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that, and this is why I wanted to look right. Hmm. And I, and I, I thought maybe if he was just some young kid that I was going to, I was going to probably really push. So there's, there's two things that I would say to someone who's really young and, and then I'll probably be more specific to you now that I know that you're this probably high achiever, you know, semi pro athlete and PhD guy. Like, so you probably got a lot going on. Um, average 20 year old kid, I'd say, man, this, uh, if I could go back and tell myself what to do this time, it would be uh, audio books or reading. It'd be uh, grow, growing my skills, growing my brain, learning, right? Because in those years when you don't have a kid, you don't have a family, this is your opportunity to to build yourself, to invest in yourself. Now, the one thing I'll say about this, Adam, and I'll paint this picture for you, okay? Because you're so into things. There's certain things you can get really into, So, and, I, and some of them keep you up. If you're reading a business book before you go to bed, is that going to help your sleep or is that going to make you stay up thinking about all kinds of different things? I'm actually okay on that. You yeah, are? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I'm, okay. a, I'm, I'm okay. actually okay on that. Re reading does really calm me. Yeah, it aspect. does. Okay. It does relax. Even if it is business, right? If I think about our business, like, so if I start getting into our stuff, yeah. not a good idea. Yeah. So you have to read about business, but not apply Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. so I like business strategy, like reading, like I'm reading a business book right now, right? The five okay. dysfunctions of, of a team. And, uh, and it's right before bed and it's uh, it's very calming and relaxing. And, and a lot of times it's like, Oh, that's good. No, we need to do that. Yeah. Like, and, and I, that actually calms me. But if I'm like going into our business, then that will get me stressed out yeah. oh, like that. Yeah. So, so totally. So anyway, so there's, 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 there's that piece of advice. Uh, and if that resonates with you because you're growth minded and you want to do that, then I would lean into that. But then maybe you're also somebody too who needs to like really practice some things like, you know, spiritual practice or meditation or really calming yourself and maybe the, the mobility and stretching and maybe maybe you're already go, 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 learn, 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 grow, 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 and, and you need to throttle down. Then I would say something that's like more passive, like where you're doing a relaxed stretch, you're doing like a you know hot bath, you're doing things that are going to really calm you down and actually take you out of your your head. They say that lavender lotion actually works. I know. Do you do that? I have uh, on yourself or your kids. What? No, I, the lavender lotion. I have lavender myself. bubble. Bath. Well, you know what I'm saying. When they were little, you never oh, did that yeah, with your yeah, kids. Yeah, when they were little? yeah, 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 yeah. 
because they they recommend that for children. All the for, all for babies, the, they say you, all the babies. Yeah, so yeah you smells, massage your baby. It is it is quite I calming. Now. I be, you're rubbing your 14 year old <laughs> shoulders with blood. I was like, where are you going with that? Yeah. <laughs> Weird. He's like, Dad, I'm, I'm 14. Yeah, yeah I was actually going to give him the advice. Like, if you have a girlfriend, get her to read you stories. Yeah. So <laughs> He does have ever, a girlfriend. Ever tell I saw you about, that. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Ever tell you about her totally, day? Yeah, then yeah, you'll, yeah. <laughs> you'll fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real quick, sorry to interrupt you. Look, we have a sale this month on some programs. We have a beginner program, Map Starter. It's fifty percent off. Then we have a bundle that's different. It's called the Starter Bundle that includes our most popular programs. That's also fifty percent off. So if you're interested in that, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Next question is from Steffers in Progress. If you don't have access to places that have water tanks and DEXA scans, what is the next best recommended way to test my body fat? You know, uh, so of course you can get electronic impedance. They're inexpensive nowadays. You could buy scales and things you hold in your hands. They're not accurate, but you can use them to look at trends. So if you're testing yourself, uh, and by the way, you want to you want to control all the variables. So make sure it's like okay, same time of day, same day, same amount of water before. Like everything, keep everything as close to the same as you can. Test yourself on one of those, and then after, and then watch the trends. Right, if it goes up or down two or three, you know, one or two percent, three percent. Don't look, don't pay attention until you see like three, four weeks of it moving in a particular direction. Then you know you're gaining body fat or losing body fat. The other thing you can do, and it's, it's actually remarkably. Um, effective in terms of predicting somewhat, right, within a certain range, body fat is circumference measurement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Waist measurement. Yeah, especially waist. Yeah. Waist measurement. That's Doug's go-to. I like it. Yeah. And waist measurement is, is in terms of single measurements you could take, it's pretty damn well correlated to body fat percentage and, and overall health. I mean, all of them in my, so it's funny the, the we, whoever picked this question, cause I'd sent a, I sent a clip that I did yesterday to the, to the YouTube team for them to create a, a reel out of it. Speaking to this exact point. Cause I knew yesterday when I talked about my body spec test, I knew right away I would have 30 to 40 emails of how accurate is that? Or yeah, like, yeah, and I'm just like, doesn't matter. I said, don't send me a message about how accurate or not. It doesn't matter to me. All that matters to me is that I do it the same day, same time of the day with no food, no yeah, water, right. and I do it again that way. And I don't care if it says 15.8, 17.2, 13.0. I don't care. Where I, well, all I care about is the next time that I go take it, is it moving in the right direction or the wrong direction? And it, there's a very good chance it could go either way. And I know that. I've Many times I thought I was doing everything right, and a month went by, I went and tested, and I was going the wrong direction, and I course corrected. I mean, oh man, I must have been increasing my uh, activity too much. I need to so use it as a guide, and change just a couple variables, and then give it time, like Sal was saying, to retest again. Again, using any any form, most stuff is accurate enough. At least that will be yeah. consistent, and that's all you're really using for. Don't get hung up on. Who tells you the most? What what's the most accurate test? You can even use one of those cheap CVS scales if you want. Also, to. within three, within four or five percent, really doesn't matter um, the quote unquote accuracy of it. Like if you're really high, you're really high. Okay, that's not good. But at the end of the day, I mean, bodybuilders will talk about this all the time. I remember there was an article, and I think it was Mike Menser who was talking about how lean he was testing, and the other bodybuilders were like nobody cares. Yeah, you're going to be on stage. Yeah, it's about how lean you look. Yeah. Nobody cares about your body a lot, uh, that, that's still very common. Yeah, right. So a lot of my peers, I was more of a, I was actually more of an analytical geek with that stuff than I, than I, that was actually really surprising to me. Um, when I got into that, uh, a lot of the guys were like, oh yeah, I don't even test body fat. I don't even, because it just messes with my head. Yep. So too mm. many of them would just stay away from it because they have a plan and then they're going to stick to it all mm -hmm. the way till the end. And then hopefully it presents the best version of them. I was a little more analytical, so yeah. I like to use it. But yeah, a lot of guys that don't even yeah. mess with that. I was going to say, you could just start a podcast and get two friends to tell you when you're fat. That you're fat. <laughs> <laughs> Adam and I do your body fat test all the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, <laughs> Constantly evaluating. Next question. Super accurate, too. <laughs> Very accurate. <laughs> Next question is from D Wheel 10. I just opened a training studio. Do you have any advice? Close it down. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's a tough dream. No, it's kidding. a tough business. Uh, but if tough. you love it, if you love it, it's very rewarding. I owned one for 15, yeah, yeah. 15 years. Uh, the, the the first thing I'll tell you, because you just opened it, so the number one priority for you right now is to get clients, to get some exposure, to get people to know who you are, where you are, uh, because people aren't just going to walk in, no. right? 
you have these big box gyms with lots of advertising. They get walk-ins. They don't even get a lot of walk-ins, but they get them. A training studio, I remember when I opened mine, I expected to not get many walk-ins. I didn't expect to get zero. Mm. Zero. Mm. Nobody walks in to a small studio. Nobody cares. If somebody does, then you're lucky. So the first thing that I did, this was one of the most impactful things I did, was I went around. I've talked about this many times. I went around and acted like the mayor of my shopping center. Oh my God, in my you're area. still my piece. That's exactly and what And I, I walked into small businesses. I went to all the small businesses, introduced myself- Joint ventures. To the manager. Always introduced myself to the manager because I just opened up. I had lots of room in my schedule and I would give them free personal training and I would ask for nothing in return. Nothing. Knowing that if I did a good job, that they would see people in their business and they were three doors down, four doors down, that they would start referring people to me. And sure enough, this took- maybe 30 days or so. And I started getting referrals from the hairdresser over here, from the person that owned the pharmacy down over here, from the manager of the, you know, the Mexican restaurant over here. And then I started getting referrals from them because people were already shopping in that shopping center. But that was by far the most effective thing. I never did anything in advertising came close. I did nothing else that came close to that. Not only that, he's totally, I was literally going to say the exact same thing. So since I, since you took that, I mm. will add on this because what I was going to say was, I can talk all day with you about this, but I'll give you something very tactical. I was going to give an actual specific goal of go go meet 20 business owners that are the closest to your, your gym, yeah. right? So the 20 closest business owners, go meet them personally. And since you gave that advice, I'll take it to the next step because another thing that you get from that, aside from training all them, which I 100% agree should also do that too, now you set the table for having like free, like, um, webinars. I say webinars. We're so now I'm in the digital yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seminars at their places. At, yeah, yeah, at their places, or they'll let you post like think, flyers, and they're saying like, "I have a free uh, fat loss uh, seminar on this date." Uh, it's totally free. Just leave your name and email or name and phone number. And you put that on all the, in all their businesses. And if you do, if you're training them, like Sal's saying, they'll probably even talk about it and promote it for you to help you out. Now you've got 20 other business owners that have foot traffic every day that are driving over to your free uh, seminar that you have set up for on fat loss or whatever. You call it, you know, a butts and guts clinic. You can, I mean, there's a million names of things that you can oh, do to give free information and, and then you get 50, 100 people in front of you that you can now, now talk now to. Now, let me add one thing to this because this is a huge, I'm about to give you, and if you just opened up a studio, you're a trainer, you're trying to do this, you're, you're probably going to make this mistake. You think you're going to walk into a new business. I'm a new trainer. I'm going to offer this manager free training and they're going to take me up on my offer. Nope. <laughs> nope. You still got to sell it. Mm -hmm. Even though it's free you still have to sell your training. So don't just go in. Here's a mistake people make. They go in, hi, I'm Sal. I opened up the studio down the street. Nice to meet you. Hey, by the way, mm -hmm. I'd love to train you for free. You would be surprised how many people say no. How many people are like, you? no, I'm okay. I'm thank yeah. No, thank you. Nice to meet you type yeah, of deal. Yeah. So what I would do is I would go in. I'd introduce myself. I would talk to them. That's right. I would ask them questions. Do you like to work out? Oh, I used to work out. Oh, really? Where'd you work out? We'd have conversation. And then if the conversation led itself in that direction, I'd say, hey, I'd, I'd, I'd love to take you through some workouts because you still have to sell yeah. free training. So don't make the mistake that a lot of people make where they think, they, oh, I'm just going to go in with this and lead with this free training and I'm going to get all these managers want to work out with me. It's not the case. What would you guys say? Now, I, I don't, I'm not going to really add anything to that because I totally agree, but in terms of like businesses to target were the most effective at sending you leads. For oh, me, anything health for me. Yeah. Well, for me, it was like a, a hair hair salon salons. Oh, and huge. then also any medical like a uh, clinic or anything, anything where someone line. cares about how they look or feel. Yep. Yeah. So like that could be anything. Any, so anybody where people, cause that, that's what they'll have in common. Like, so taking care of their hair, uh, to going to massage or clinics. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any, anything like that. Uh, and by the way, this person better be in our trainer course. Like this is like yep. literally the advice you're hearing is the stuff that we go into detail and help all That's the coaches the and trainers advice. and business operators with. Like the idea of our course was to not try and compete with the NASMs and NCSF and no, ACE no, no. and all these good na good national certs that are out there. It was to fill the gaps of this stuff because to me. This is what happens to so many trainers and business operators. They got all these certs. They're really smart. They know how to help people nutritionally. They understand physiology, biomechanics. Now all it's time stuff. to go start your business. Like, but they got to actually make money. And they're like, oh, yeah. shit. No one taught us that. And so that was the idea of the course that we did was to help business operators scale. Hair salons were great. 
Justin. And and I part of the reason why they were so great at giving me referrals is because when they're doing someone's hair, they're with them for an hour, three hours, maybe they're doing hair extensions, whatever, and they talk about everything. And so then yeah. what ends up happening, they start talking about, oh, I just started working out. With this trainer down the Justin, street, just open so a studio. He's so cute. He's yeah. so awesome. <laughs> Probably yeah. for Justin. <laughs> and you end up you getting have to go over there. After that, it was chiropractors. That was the second most common, yeah, one, yeah. popular one for me. Yeah. Because then once I taught, once they showed them that I understood correctional exercise, they would send me their their patients. That's how I got Doug. In fact, if you're next to a next to a Whole Foods or next to a um, supplement it, store, I mean, those are all winners. Obviously, those are all winners. And then the other thing I would say is set up a free body fat testing booth. Outside of some, uh, you know, some of the more busy uh, businesses around, um, and test people's body fat, and that should open up conversations. Uh, for I mean, that's for such a like that's this. such a great piece of advice. And and you, by the way, the, for this business person, yeah, it's so funny because this follows the question. The question before the person said, "I can't." There's no water tanks, Dexa scan. So there's people yeah. looking to get their body fat tested. I went and got mine done at a local gym. They held it. They held it there. So I had to drive. I had to drive 30 minutes to go to this place to do that. What a great place to try and capture leads. So you can host the body fat test thing, which they have those, uh, the body spec and yeah. the fitness wave. And they have all these different mm -hmm. companies that have these portable tanks, these portable scans. And then you set it up at your gym and then you go around all these businesses. You do it a month in advance. So you drive all this traffic traffic that you're hosting these scans. And then you get all these, Did these someone trying to sell your training or do they know who you no, are? No, okay. no. That's awesome. All right. I know you liked that episode. If you did check this one out, 30% body fat for men. This is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible Six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now, there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body